Hello, in the problem we are going to see how to solve a problem and determine the safety factor or unknown dimension based on theories of failure. That is in the video we will solve a problem based on theories of failure. That is why we will see the unknown factor of safety or unknown dimension. Let me read the problem now. Determine the safety factor for the bracket as shown in figure based on the distortion energy theory and maximum shear theory. The material is 2024 T4 aluminium with sigma y value that is yield strength value 324 megapascal. The rod length is L is equal to 150 mm, arm A is equal to 200 mm, the diameter of rod D is equal to 37.5 mm. The load F is equal to 4545 Newton that is 4545 Newton. So actually what they have given is there is a rod which is projected from the wall along Z axis having the length of L that is 150 mm and at the end of the rod the arm is attached which is along the X axis and having the length of 200 mm. At the end of the rod the force F is acting towards downward direction vertically and that is value 4545 Newton. That is a rod diameter 37.5 mm. That is the wall in the Z direction of the project. Vertical line of the project. Wall and on the rod at the end of the arm attached. And the arm is in the X axis direction. That is the length of A. That is 200 mm. Rod at the length 150 mm. That is the diameter 37.5 mm. Arm or end la, or force downward act a value kudurkanga 4545 Newton. Okay. So from the problem we need to solve and calculate safety factor value based on distortion energy theory and maximum shear stress theory. In the problem solve pani, distortion energy theory mola maavo, maximum shear stress theory mola maavo, nam unknown safety factor na panna pora apna calculate panna pora. So there are so many theories of failure. Maximum principal stress theory, maximum principal strain theory, maximum shear stress theory, maximum strain energy theory. So there are so many theories of failure and in the problem particularly they have asked we need to calculate the problem, calculate the answer using distortion energy theory and maximum shear theory. Okay. Now let me discuss what are the different stresses acting on the element. Okay. Now see the element actually. Here actually the force is acting at the end of the rod towards downward direction okay towards downward direction the force is acting so what i am going to do is at the axis of the rod i am adding one positive force and one negative force so actually in the in the arm mode end la vandu f ngra force downward act a irukku so f abdingra force vandu epdi irukku appo na downward act aadu so minus f abdi vechikala na enna pandra in the axis at the end of the rod, what I am doing is upward force and downward force act. Like uh, we can see that 1 plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 1, correct? So if there is a force, I add one force and I subtract one force. So the final answer is the force only. So at the end of the arm, there is a force towards downward direction. So what I am doing is, I am actually Imaginarily, I am adding one force upward direction, one force downward direction, same amount of force. So, minus F plus F, it will get cancelled, right? So, I simply add upward force and downward force at the end of the rod. Okay, now let me summation the forces minus F plus F upward direction, so plus, then again minus F. So, I am doing the rod at the upward downward force act. Add, add. What is this? I have to add the downward act in the force. That is the axis of the axis. So, eccentricity is the force. So, to avoid the eccentricity, I add one force and subtract one force at the axis. So, if I do the summation, minus of, minus of, plus of. So, minus of, plus of cancel, I will add minus of. So for that purpose only, I add and subtract, subtract a yeah, force with the element. Okay, fine. Now, after adding the two forces, the upward force and downward force at the end of the rod are kind of parallel forces and opposite direction forces. So both forces, these, these two forces actually, this one is 
downward direction vertically downward this one is vertically upward so both forces are parallel forces and acting in opposite direction which may result in couple or couple formation la enna avapona idu create pannum adhaavadhu indha rendu force upward agra force f ayum arm oda end la downward agra force ayum paathinga appona rendume parallel force opposite direction force இந்த ரெண்டும் என்ன பண்ணுவோம் அப்படின்னா சேர்ந்து ஒரு கப்பலை ஃபார்ம் பண்ணும் ஒரு கப்பல் என்ன பண்ணும் அப்படின்னா இந்த டோட்டல் ராடையும் ட்விஸ்ட் பண்ணும் இந்த கிரியேட் ஆகிற கப்பல் என்ன பண்ணும் டோட்டல் ராடையும் என்ன பண்ணும் அப்படின்னா ட்விஸ்ட் பண்ணும் அதுக்கப்புறம் இந்த டவுன்வேர்டாக இருக்கிற ராடை மட்டும் பா டவுன்வேர்டாக இருக்கிற ஃபோர்ஸ் மட்டும் பார்த்தீங்க அப்படின்னா இந்த என்டையர் என்டையர் ராடையும் என்ன பண்ணும் அப்படின்னா பெண்ட் பண்ண ட்ரை பண்ணும் ஓகே ஸோ ஐ ஆம் ஆடிங் அ ஃபோர்ஸ் அட் தி ஆக்சஸ் பாசிட்டிவ் டைரக்ஷன் அண்ட் நெகட்டிவ் டைரக்ஷன் and the positive direction force and the negative force at the end of the rod are forming a couple so couple means it will be a twisting and the downward force acting at the axis actually will try to bend the rod so there will be a bending stress so there are two different stresses will be induced at the end of the rod one is twisting because of the couple and another one is bending due to the direct load application so clear so i am explain it again here at the end of the arm there is a force towards downward direction so there is a force toward downward direction and is it this is a eccentric loading and to make it to direct loading i am adding one positive directional force and negative direction force at the axis in same direction okay in same plane kind of same plane i am adding positive force and negative force the positive force and the already available downward force form a couple which is which means it results in twisting and the downward force will be a direct loading which will try to bend the rod so that will be a bending stress okay so there are two different stresses will be induced at the end of the rod one is twisting and another one is bending and the bending formula bending stress formula is there sigma b is equal to mb y by i mb is bending moment y is the distance between center to the outer layer i is the moment of inertia or we can write like that mb by z mb is bending moment z is section modulus so we can write the bending equation like that sigma b is equal to mb by z mb is nothing but bending moment and z is nothing but section modulus and shear stress twisting we can write like that because there is a formula for torque t is equal to pi by 16 tau d cube so to calculate tau value i bring all the values towards left side 16 pi a d cube so tau is equal to 16 divided by pi d cube into t pi d cube into so these are the two formulas we are going to use to calculate the bending stress value and twisting stress value so actually bending equation enna pathinga appadina sigma b is equal to mb y by i y ingrad enna appadina and the rod oda cross section la center point la irundhu outer layer varaikku ulla distance tha enna appadina y and i ingrad enna appadina moment of inertia nama idu eppadi eludalam appadina mb by z appdi eludalam mb ingrad bending moment value z ingrad section modulus value Z ingrad actually i by y appdi varu y kile konadinga appadina i by y nu varu z da vandu i by y adhey mari twisting ku or formula irukku torque is equal to pi by 16 tau t cube alla tau mattum left side vechittu matha ellathai right side konadinga appadina tau is equal to 16 by pi d cube into t so if we know bending moment value and twisting moment value we can calculate the bending stress and shear stress okay and now we are going to calculate the bending stress due to direct loading and sigma b is equal to m by z m is bending moment value bending moment na force into distance sayingla so here the bending will happen at the rod idha rod vechikla the rod la end la enna avudha appadina and the load act avudha appadina the entire rod will be try to bend okay so rod or length enna l so bending moment m is equal to the force acting into distance l so clear so bending moment m is equal to force acting f into perpendicular distance l f is equal to 4545 newton they have given and l is equal to 150 mm divided by z 
section modulus for circular cross section is equal to pi by 32 d cube d it is given 37.5 mm so if you substitute all the value f l and d the answer for bending is 131.75 newton per mm square 131.75 megapascal and we can calculate the twisting moment also here twisting moment and shear stress t is equal to pi by 16 tau t cube already we know that and t is equal to force into twisting radius so actually what is happening here is the arm will be tried to twist ok arm will be tried to twist at the radius of a so twisting moment t is equal to the force which makes the couple into radius of the couple a so twisting moment t is equal to f into a so tau is equal to 16 by pi d cube into t for t f into a f is equal to 4545 newton and a is equal to 200 mm a is equal to 200 mm d is equal to 37.5 cube t cube na 37.5 cube the answer is 87.3 newton per mm square so this is how we can calculate the stresses induced in the particular bracket which is given in the problem and after that now we are going to apply the theories of failure to apply in theories of failure we need to calculate the principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 maximum principal stress and minimum principal stress the formula is available in design data book psg publication page number 7.2 sigma 1 to 1 is the maximum principal stress sigma 2 is the minimum principal stress there is a formula sigma x sigma y by 2 plus or minus 1 by 2 root of sigma x minus sigma y the whole square plus 4 tau x y square so plus we need to substitute for maximum minus we need to substitute for minimum principal stress so in the formula pathinga apona design data book psc publication la page number 7.2 la in the formula available arko. sigma 1 ngirudhu maximum principal stress sigma 2 ngirudhu minimum principal stress so the plus or minus mention pannirupanga plus substitute panninga apona maximum stress value kadikum minus substitute panninga apona minimum stress value kadikum so actually in the sigma x sigma y ngirudhu enna apona along the x axis the force eppadi act aagudhu abdingiradha enna apona sigma x and along the y axis force eppadi act aagudhu abdingiradha enna apona sigma y okay ingla so namakku pathinga apona unit direction mattum da ore ore direction la mattum da enna irukku appadi namakku force act aagudhu ore ore direction la enna irukku appadina ungalku stress irukum seringla so sigma y na enna eduthukuren appadina zero nu eduthukuren yen zero nu eduthukuren sigma y or sigma z idu vandu two axis and the end axis la or axis la mattum namakku enna irukku appadina namakku stress act aagudhu seringla adhu either y a irukala illa x a irukala so innor axis la ulla stress vandu enna irukku appadina zero a irukum so na eduthukuren sigma x a sigma b nu eduthukuren tau x y a tau nu eduthukuren by substituting sigma x is equal to sigma b and tau x y is equal to tau and substituting plus symbol positive symbol i can get sigma 1 value if i put negative symbol i can get sigma 2 value okay now i can get both maximum and minimum principal stress value and after getting maximum and minimum principal stress value i need to substitute in uniform distortion distortion energy theory and maximum shear theory distortion energy theory pathinga appadina from page number 7.3 design data book psc publication page number 7.3 la all the five theories there will be formulas that is some equation koduthu which is equal to sigma y by n abdin koduthirupanga n ngiradhu enna appadina factor of safety and sigma y enna appadina yield strength value so sigma y value sum la koduttaanga yield strength 324 mega pascal sum la koduttaanga factor of safety kandupidikano sigma 1 sigma 2 ngiradhu minimum principal stress value maximum principal stress value ipo namu kandupidichirukom so distortion energy theory formula la sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma y a substitute panninga appadina we can get the factor of safety value 1.61 adhe mari if you substitute sigma 1 value sigma 2 value into maximum shear energy theory maximum shear theory then we can get the factor of safety value of 1.475 okay this is how we can use the theories of failure to calculate the unknown factor of safety suppose if the factor of safety is given and diameter is unknown we can calculate the diameter also the procedure is same thank you